Ooh, smells good. Hey everybody, I'm Tony from Imminent Sonic Destruction. Uh, my band is having a heavy metal bake sale. We're trying to raise funds to record our next album. Uh, and it's going to be a special night because not only are we going to be selling a bunch of baked goods, but uh, I got uh, three great bands joining us. I got a Transient, Rain, and Hate Unbound. And uh, to do something a little cool and different, I went ahead and interviewed each band. We talked about their music, what they're all about, and most importantly, their favorite treats. Tell me how the band formed. Um, Scott, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt and I were uh, just, we were just both looking to play some more music, so we thought we'd start a new band <laughs> and play more music. Yeah. That's and cool. so we, uh, we knew that um, Jeremy had wanted to start a project that was a little less metal than what either of us had been doing. And then our friend Nick, was a big fan of our previous band, Silent Laps, and we knew he had skills <laughs> on guitar. And in the studio. Mm -hmm. So we said, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> Want to do stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so we got together. And That's we awesome. said, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. You smiled on me, shed my defenses with the scars sustained. And still you tell me you love me I just started thinking about it and I'm like, you know, it just literally just popped in my head. I'm like, I want to start a band, you know, and I want to start doing something like like you're 14 in your bedroom. Yeah. I'm going to start a band. Yeah. I'm going to call my friends and, dude, you want to be in my band? You know, it's kind of like that, you know, and it just started out like that. And um, I started making phone calls, you know, and, and just looking for the right people. And that's pretty much how it started. That's cool. How, how long have you guys been together? Um, geez, when did I think probably at least five years? Probably about maybe, five maybe years. I've been together about and three, and three, three, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. three years. Oh, yeah, How'd you guys form? How did Hate Unbound come to be? Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> Craigslist? No. You know, come on. I heard about Darryl it. Daryl called me and I uh, went and jammed with him. That's and, it? Uh, yeah, we just helped a couple Brad other bands. showed up. But he was in, in so the hate. I was in software system. Yeah, software system split. We just all burned the hearse and just Craig called him up and said, hey, let's do this. And, uh, um, Art actually answered Craigslist because we already had John. I called him up. John told me about it before. And he's like, man, if you do it, though, we're going to be busy. you got to quit your other band, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So let's talk about the band name. How'd you guys come up with it? I was looking for something that was ambiguous. Yeah. You know, and it didn't pigeonhole us as far as like, you know, you can hear certain bands like, you know, like uh, Chainsaw Mama or oh, something. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, I, yeah, I already know what they sound like. You yeah. know, I wanted something that allowed us to just write the way we write and it still fits with the name and it's right. not like a, like a label. It's, a, it's, not a, it's not a label, it's a name. Yeah, that right. makes sense. Um, we went through a long, drawn-out process. As uh, they always are. Yeah, and, and all the cool stuff that sounded great, those names were already taken. So eventually we settled on this horrible name, that, but no one had it, so we're happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible? We get like well, hate it's, it's unique. Like we that. enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hate <laughs> rebound. What the hate, fuck? Who calls you hate rebound? It's just um, people are, yeah. don't know. All know, the time. Right?
All right, so talk a little bit about your writing process. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's see. I know, I know album, guys, Matt, Matt came in with two song, uh, two or three songs. He two, and then I remember. demoed them at home. Demoed them at home, and then I had <laughs> two songs that I brought in, brought in uh, myself. All Matt instrumental and I, arrangements yeah. of songs, yeah. and then mm. Matt and I wrote two or three songs together. Boner <laughs> Part Two. <A> boner <laughs> Part Two intro, <laughs> intro, intro song. We have very very inventive and names for our songs. Yeah. So what's Boner Part list. Two called now? It's the last one. Lost Ones Part Two. Yeah. It basically, I'll come up with um, a structure of a song, you know, because most of it's written on a guitar, mm -hmm. you know, and. Um, so I'll write the structure and the, the melody and um, I'll usually get with Mike first and we start putting a skeleton to it, you know, yeah. a heartbeat or whatever yeah, you yeah. want to call it, you know, and, and we start kind of getting it tightened up and then after him and I work out, you know, how many times we're doing what and whatever he's going to do underneath what I'm doing and then we'll present that to the rest of the band and then, you know, if she's singing it, she'll... Uh, She'll um, collaborate with me at times with uh, the the vocal melodies or whatnot, or there's yeah. times that she'll just come up with whatever. Yeah, and usually it works. Most of the time, that's how it happens. I would say we're just they play it for us, and things kind of just pop in your head, yeah. and, and yeah. the creativity begins. I tend to come with almost like whole structures of songs. Like our first song that we did, "Open Your Eyes," was yeah. pretty much all done in my head when I got here, and uh, we just kind of. You know, you tweak things as you go, but yeah. uh, and I still write. We're working on a new tune now that I pretty much have it all in mind. And That's cool. And um, yeah, some sometimes we do the uh, the old spaghetti um, method. You throw it against the wall and see yeah, it sticks. Yeah, sticks. It usually comes with full songs. I come with like a five second piece. I'm like, make this a song. Right. <laughs> make <laughs> make yeah, it a song. Make it so number one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, lyrics. Um, I usually wait till they're all done yeah. and I add it, or I'll have ideas like as soon as I hear a riff and yeah. I'll let Daryl know. Like, all right, this has got to be the verse and the chorus. And I'll be like, fuck that. That was the intro. So this is a pretty standard question. Some of your your guys' influence uh, for when you are writing, either as a band or individually. Of course, you haven't written anything as a band except for <laughs> Thoughts Part 1. I mean, I listen to a pretty wide variety of stuff, but when I was writing stuff for this, my biggest influences was the latest All Sist album and um, like later Anathema stuff. We have a wide range of, of, of music styles, yeah. Yeah. you know, which which is it, which is influenced by, you know, you get six people together, yeah, you know, but yeah, yeah Dream Theater is definitely a big influence. Um, so is uh, Circus Maximus. Yeah, them guys are freaking sick, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, that was a new thing, though, right? Yeah, you yeah. I mean, Journey, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Journey, great, you got yeah. Journey, you got uh, Dokken, Van Halen, you know, all the big bands from the 80s, too. Oh, yeah. But we don't take all the dated stuff from them. We take the stuff that's, you know, more timeless. Even Boston, that's some yeah. timeless Old music. Boston, you yes. know? All of those are my influences as well, but you got to throw some chicks in there. Right? Yeah, you yeah. got yeah. <laughs> chicks in there. Yeah. yeah, so I love No Doubt and Shirley Manson from Garbage. I like Prague and tech stuff. Um, yeah, it could be anything. You know, Dream Theater, obviously, one of the more popular. Um, Mice Touch, kind of an unknown Scandinavian band. Um, um, Spiral Architect, you, oh, yeah. you name it. I could probably go on for days, you know. Um, and and, and I, I, I'm a huge Thrash fan, too. I love Thrash just because it's so simple and, yeah. you know, energetic. And, uh, I, I think that covers it. Um, I don't know. Will? I, anything that's noty. It's got a lot of things in it that I can't play. I like listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I like Megadeth. Like glam metal. Glam metal. Oh, yeah, you love glam metal? He does kind of come you. up I like with like metal bird hair sometimes. Yeah. Whitechapel. Yeah, really? Whitechapel? Wretched. Yeah. Wretched. Battlecross. Yeah, dude. Who? Battlecross. <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> All 
right, so you guys know this is going to be the heavy metal bake sale. Mm -hmm. We're literally going to sell baked goods, uh, cupcakes and the sort. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get a little weird and talk about our favorite desserts and treats. <laughs> Haribo Gold Bears. Oh, my God. Haribo <laughs> anything. But you know those um, French soap pies? Yes. Those things are ridiculous, but I made it better by making a French silk like chocolate peanut butter pie. Yeah, yeah. So also, my uh, my wife is gluten intolerant, so I love <laughs> I love scotcheroos and Rice Krispie treats and no bakes with gluten free oats. Oh, Rice Krispie treats. Rice Krispie. Oh yeah, great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the cocoa pebble ones. Yeah. My favorite. Or my own homemade donuts. Oh, cool. Oh, so then you'll be bringing some. Right. Since it is yeah. a big sale, cheesecake, I need ideas. Cheesecake. Mm. Yes, cheesecake. I would punch <laughs> no, no. a baby in the face. We're I love so donuts, so you bring donuts. You are the donuts. second person to, to reference donuts. Chocolate chip cookies. Oh, my Simpson donut. over here. Donuts. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, lately, my wife has had had a big bowl of Dove chocolate sitting, you know, right on the island, and yeah. I've been like eating those. Yeah. Too many of those. Uh, somebody said something earlier that really uh, piqued my interest: uh, strawberry shortcake. Oh, that was me. Those were good. She made some phenomenal peanut butter cookies. Those peanut butter balls wrapped in chocolate. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you that was ridiculous. Pies. See, brownies. I think they're always organs. fantastic. <laughs> uh, who doesn't love a good brownie? I just like chocolate chip cookies. Oh. That's about it. Dude, I had, sure some, gonna... I had some fucking Kringle today. <laughs> it's like some Danish thing, but it's like a dessert, almost like a dessert pizza, but the clay, the, the crust is super flaky and it's got glaze on it. You know that you've learned to make it because it's so flaky. I had some today at work. It was unreal. Well, Zingers? Zingers. Zingers, Zingers Well, this is more of a bake show. Uh, yeah. Well, he's talking show. about M&M's, so I was like, oh. <laughs> well, you can use M&M's in... Do you remember the bumpy cake that Kroger yeah, used to sell? Yeah, absolutely. They don't sell it anymore? Right. This place does, gluten-free, <laughs> and it's amazing. It's amazing. That's awesome. How about creme brulee? Oh, what's that, creme brulee? That's my all-time favorite dessert. Really? Tiramisu is another good one. Yeah. <laughs> Tiramisu is good.